Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. So in today's video, I'm going to draw this hand pose for you and talk a little bit about that process. Uh, so first, what I want to do is establish the overall lengths of the forms. So working kind of big to small. And the, uh, the main thing that I pay attention to here really is that the placement of the knuckles. And then if you look at the palm portion of your hand, it's roughly the height of your middle finger. Uh, so it's, you know, I can kind of do like a half, uh, halfway point there. And then also the middle knuckle comes up to a point. It's higher than the rest. Uh, so I'll draw this bit of an angle in place there. And from here, I'll just establish the lengths of the fingers. Uh, so a little bit of a, a stick, stick man approach. And uh, also the orientation of the knuckles. There's a bit of a curve there. And uh, a neat thing that you can pay attention to with the first set of the knuckles is that uh, they align to the tip of the thumb, so that's a, a good placeholder. And then I'll start filling in some cylinders, so just establishing some basic form and volume. Uh, pad of the thumb, again, cylinders and some overlapping ovals, uh, lots of ovals. Ovals are a great way to kind of stack things and get a sense of foreshortening. Uh, and again, cylinders as well because it's easier to turn a cylinder on the page uh, visually than thinking about all the organic forms and the, the pads of the fingers that I can kind of get a little bit complex So I find that simplifying it in this way with the cylinders can really uh, make the process much much easier Now probably the trickiest part one of the reasons why I wanted to draw this particular hand pose uh, Is the the way that our fingers will change in orientation uh, to the camera to the viewer and then at certain points you'll see the top or bottom plane changes of the, the fingers themselves. I think that's a good thing to practice because if not, it's real easy to get in the habit of just drawing the back of the hand or the front of the hand or the side of the hand. Uh, but the hand is so dynamic that it has the ability to, you know, obviously maneuver in a way where you can see different angles and sides of each finger. Uh, and also keeping in mind that the fingers themselves can all kind of spread apart and orient a little bit differently. And you don't really start to get that until you draw lots and lots of hand poses. Uh, obviously, I'm just sharing one today, but uh, just remember to challenge yourself and draw as many as you can, uh, different angles, different orientations, uh, different size variations, all that good stuff. You know, male, female, uh, chubby fingers, skinny fingers, all that good stuff. And so now that I've got the base structure in place, I can start to render uh, the softer forms and basically start to perceive what the anatomy should look like uh, changing the silhouette to get the sense of uh, the knuckles uh, and obviously you can express this quite differently for a lot of different hands so some hands are going to be bonier and bigger knuckles uh, usually will provide a little bit of an eeriness to it uh, or a feeling of somebody that's you know elderly and, and their their bones are showing through a little bit more um, but in this case I'm really trying to think about the fatty parts of the fingers and how the, that reacts as the the fingers curve over uh, I know it goes without saying, but your best reference here is your own hand and really paying attention to that and trying to mimic whatever it is you're drawing. Uh, and if you can't mimic it because the, the view is coming back towards you, then a mirror by your art table is obviously the best choice there. So just finding the perimeter shape first and just slowly nudging things around, looking for like little subtle curves and shifts and bends. Uh, I do also try to render uh, a little bit less on the interior forms. And then, so for instance, like the pad of the thumb, uh, I use a few broken up lines there. Uh, it's real easy to just want to trace that entire thing out because uh, it is so dominant of a form. But I feel like it needs to be uh, blended in a sense. And since I'm not doing a, a real value study where I get in here and use like lots of different uh, shades of, of pencil or, uh, or, or some gray washes or whatever, uh, I use line breaks to kind of get that feeling that forms are blending in and out of uh, the major uh, volume of the hand. Uh, so I think that's important to pay attention to because, again, it's real easy to just trace something out and say, okay, I know what it looks like here. Let me just tra put a big line around it. And I think that really um, hurts the look of the anatomy, at least from my perception. We all have a different view of what we're after uh, when we do this type of stuff. But for this type of line art, I like to keep it a little bit softer feeling. Um, and again, if I was going to add value to this, I would uh, I'd pull back even probably a 
touch more with the line weight and let the value do all the work and get a more realistic interpretation of the hand. Um, but yeah, it's and there you can see I'm doing the line breaks like I mentioned. I just think that uh, gives a better sense and feeling of the, uh, the anatomy. So now using a mechanical pencil, and this is a HB lead, well, it doesn't matter what you use. I just, people always ask, so I like to mention it in the videos, but uh, I'll be honest, it doesn't matter what paper, what pencils, you just need to experiment with different ones so that you find what works for you. Uh, I, I find people that absolutely do not like using mechanical pencils and some that don't like to use a 0.5 and some use a 0.7 and a 0.3. It just doesn't matter. It's, it's totally up to you. Uh, and what your your feeling is, uh, and, and I mean feeling, like what does it feel like when you draw something? Does it feel like you're struggling? Does it feel like you're trying too hard? You just want to find an ebb and a flow to what you're doing. And so whatever tools yield that kind of feeling, I, I say that's the right tools. Uh, and just keep in mind that no matter what you're using, with enough practice, you'll actually get that sense of uh, comfort with it. I know that when I started drawing digitally, it was very uncomfortable at first. Uh, especially with the Intuos tablets that I use. And now I draw on them almost as well as I would draw on anything else. It's just a different feeling that you have to acclimate to. So this part of the hand is really what I was after as far as a study. Uh, just getting that sense of some fingers are pointing up and away and some are bending back towards our view. And then getting that difference of plane changes uh, in the orientation of the fingers as they come back towards us and we can see the... Uh, the nails and you know the nails of the finger uh, I think those are some of the kind of the coolest hand poses uh, to, to draw because it shows that again that range of movement you know the clenching and the ability to contort and twist the hand and the fingers is just so cool uh, and also just that hands pound for pound are probably the best thing for you to practice so when people are trying to improve their skill set and they're avoiding hands. I think that's a big problem. Uh, it's something we have to be aware of because, and I've done it myself. I'm not uh, excluding myself from this problem, but we have to remember that if you go for those things that are harder, it makes everything else easier by comparison. And I think hands are a perfect example of that, since they're so dynamic and expressive. For one, they help you tell a way better story, but also since they have that range of movement, you start to think differently about arms and legs because uh, let's face it fingers are just little legs and if you don't believe me I mean have you ever sat there on your table with your fingers making little legs dancing right we've all done that but seriously just keep in mind if you practice hands more and more I assure you drawing the body is going to relate differently and easier in your mind because again you're, you're starting with almost the hardest part of the body now as far as the things that are the most important to get good at for your art I would start with faces and I would say hands and body language or gesture or neck and neck like they're both extremely important to getting uh, better at drawing the overall you know your overall character designs um, but yeah it's it's one of those things where if you want to go for the things that are the most difficult I think you're gonna see the biggest and most dramatic uh, improvements in your work uh, just because you know they're the hardest but if you sit around drawing the things you're good at and the things that are easy all day long you know where's that going to get you basically so so yeah with this one um you know i'm i'm want to be a little bit critical of it and say that thumb looks unnatural i i think i should have did a bit better with the expression of the hand the thumb feels like it's too stiff and upright um so as i try to generate that pose myself right now and looking at my own hand my thumb wants to point back and away from the the mass of the hand and the, the other fingers. So I think it is helpful when you're doing this to, again, study your own hand, try to mimic what you're looking at, and think about how it feels. You know, because if it doesn't feel right, then that means the gesture's not right. It's going to read poorly. So always, always look for that, that expressiveness and that feeling of it. So that'll bring this one to a close. I appreciate you tuning in and watching and supporting the channel. Uh, we're coming up on 200,000 subscribers, so share the videos. Let's get there fast, and we'll do some kind of giveaway or something fun. Uh, very appreciative of everybody that follows the channel and watches the content. More on the way very soon. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.